Spatial analysis is the process of modeling data geographically to show patterns, relationships, and trends. Start your spatial analysis workflow in ArcGIS Online with a problem or a question. For example, agriculture officials in the Marlboro region of New Zealand want to control the growth of an invasive plant called Nacella tussock. They suspect that campers in the region may be encountering the plant and inadvertently spreading its seeds to other areas. A question arising from this problem is, which campgrounds have areas of Nacella tussock growth nearby and how widespread is it? Answering this question will provide useful information for public education campaigns and a baseline for comparison in the future. Once you have a question, the next step is to identify or collect data that would help answer it. This map shows some important features in the Marlboro region. The map has three layers of data to explore. Commercial campground locations, the known distribution of Nacella tussock, and the boundary of the Marlboro region. The Nacella tussock range layer shows where the plant has been found in the region. But more information is needed to answer your question, which campgrounds have areas of Nacella tussock growth nearby and how widespread is it? The analysis and visualization tools in ArcGIS Online can provide the answers you need. Open the analysis pane to start your analysis. Tools are grouped by category, making them easier to find. The Summarize Nearby tool calculates statistics for features within a specified distance of other features. You'll use it to calculate the range of nacella tussock growth near each commercial campground. For the Input Features parameter, choose the layer containing the features that will be summarized, the nacella tussock range layer. This layer represents areas in which the plant has been found, not the actual plant density. For Nearby layer, choose Commercial Campgrounds. You want to calculate the total area of Nacella tussock in hectares within 1.5 kilometers of each campground. The output of the tool will be a polygon layer representing the bounding areas around the campgrounds and the summarized statistics. Give the output layer a name and click Estimate Credits to see how many credits the tool will consume. Credits are the currency of ArcGIS Online. They are consumed for specific transactions, such as performing analysis, geocoding, and storing features. Now you can run the tool. The History tab indicates the status of the job. Once the tool has finished running, the new layer appears in the Layers pane and on the map. The features are symbolized with a graduated color ramp. Campgrounds with the smallest areas of Nacella tussock nearby are in beige, and campgrounds with the largest areas are in dark purple. But some of the campgrounds that are shown on the map don't have any Nacella tussock within the specified 1.5 km range. Adding a filter allows you to hide these campgrounds. Create an expression that displays only the campgrounds that have Nacella tussock within range. Only those campgrounds with a summarized area in hectares value of greater than zero will be shown. When you save the filter, the beige features are removed from the map. You can see this more clearly if you hide the original campgrounds layer, which is no longer needed. Now only four features remain. These represent the campgrounds that have areas of Nacella tussock growing within a 1.5 kilometer range. You can make these remaining features stand out more by changing the symbol style. First open the Properties pane and set the transparency to zero. Then add a drop shadow effect. The features are now clearly visible. To get more information about the features, open the Attribute table for the Tussock Near Campgrounds output layer. The Summarized Area and Hectares field shows the total area of Nacella Tussock within each campground range. The campground with the largest area of Nacella tussock nearby is the Awatiri Settlers Motor Camp, where there are more than 83 hectares. The Blenheim Top 10 Holiday Park is the campground with the smallest area, with roughly 0.25 hectares. You can also visualize your analysis results using a bar chart. Open the Charts pane to configure the chart. For the category, choose Name to display the names of the campgrounds on the x-axis of the chart. By default, the count of campgrounds is shown on the y-axis, but you want the chart to show the total area of Nacella tussock near each campground. This is done by choosing the Summarized Area in Hectares field. Now turn on the option to show data labels above each bar in the chart. You can see the data values right away. 
Go to the Series tab to change the color of the bars to better coordinate with the map colors. Notice that the campground names at the bottom of the chart are cut off. This is because the default character limit for the x-axis labels is 11. You can increase this limit on the Axes tab. You can also reduce the number of decimal places in the bar chart labels to 2. Your chart is almost ready, but the titles could use some improvements. On the General tab, change the default chart and axis titles to make them clearer and more descriptive. Now take a look at the finished product. You can interact with the chart to make selections on the map. The results of your analysis are reflected in the final map and bar chart. Together, they provide a clear answer to your original question and will help officials with their tracking and public education efforts in the future. You can now share your work with others in your organization. You may even want to go a step further and showcase your work in an interactive web app for stakeholders to review. To try spatial analysis for yourself using the workflow in this video, click the link in the description and visit the Spatial Analysis Tutorial Series to learn more about analysis in ArcGIS Online.